Hi guys, this is Mina no Nihongo Lesson 1 Grammar Explanation. I highly recommend that you check out the Mina no Nihongo Lesson 1 vocabulary list before you proceed in watching this video so you can familiarize yourself with the words that we are going to use in this lesson. Without further ado, let's begin. Sore dewa hajime mashou. So for today's lesson, we will learn the following grammar points and by the end of the lesson, you should be able to introduce yourself in Japanese. Our first grammar point is N1 wa N2 des. N1 is the subject or the topic of the sentence followed by wa. This is the ha syllable but since it is a particle, it is read as wa and it is the topic marker of the sentence. Next, N2 describes N1, followed by the word desu or des. It is a Japanese copula which indicates that N2 is the predicate in the sentence. It describes N1. It also shows respect to the listener. So in Japanese, there's a formal way of talking and an informal way of talking. So one indicator of this is the word des. So this is the default, like in the middle word that shows um, politeness. If you're talking casually, this becomes da. So n1 wa n2 da. Or the most polite way of saying this is de gozaimasu. Anyway, for this um, pattern, let's stick to this. So remember this pattern because this is the basic um structure or order in constructing Japanese sentences. N1 wa N2 this. Of course, N2 can be a verb, an adjective, or a noun. But remember this pattern because we would use this all throughout our lessons. So let's take a look at some examples. I am Rose. Of course, the first thing you would say aside from greeting is introducing yourself. So how do you introduce yourself? I am and then your name. So if you check out the vocabulary list for this lesson, you would know that I is watashi. watashi. Rose in katakana is rose. Okay, so using the pattern above, let's make this into a full sentence. Watashi wa rose desu. I am rose. Very simple. Another example, uh, let's say I am a Filipino. Again, I is watashi. A Filipino is Philippine Jin. So Philippine is Philippines. Jin is um, a suffix added to a country name to indicate that I am a national of a certain country. So Philippine Jin. So if we say the full sentence, it's Watashi wa Philippine Jin desu. I am a Filipino. Okay, third example is Mr. De La Cruz is a teacher. So how do we say Mr. De La Cruz in Japanese? De La Cruz san. De La Cruz san. A teacher. So we are talking about another person. So we are using the word sensei. If you are talking about yourself, it's kyoshi. Anyway, so let's make this a full sentence. Mr. De La Cruz is a teacher. De la Cruz san wa sensei desu. I hope this is clear. Um, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next one is the negative form of this. So the first sentence that we learned is the affirmative way or stating something is something. And the negative form of this is N1 wa N2 ja arimasen. So it basically means N1 is not N2. So it's the opposite of the first one that we've learned. Ja arimasen is the negative form of des. So for writing, 
in formal situation, instead of saying ja arimasen, we use dewa arimasen. For example, I am not Maria. Using the pattern, we can say this in Japanese. Watashi wa Maria ja arimasen. So if this is a positive or affirmative statement, it's watashi wa Maria des. But since this is a negative statement, we say watashi wa Maria ja arimasen. I am not Maria. And then you can follow this by a positive statement, which is watashi wa Rose this. I'm not Maria. I am Rose. Another example. Maria is not Japanese. Maria wa Japanese is Nihonjin. And then followed by ja arimasen. Is not. Maria wa Nihonjin ja arimasen. Maria is not Japanese. Another example. Miss Bonifacio is not a teacher. Bonifacio san wa sensei ja arimasen. Bonifacio san wa sensei ja arimasen. Okay, moving on to our third grammar point is how to make a question in Japanese. It's very easy. Like I said, remember the first pattern N1 wa N2 this because all you need to do is add ka and that makes the sentence into a question. So, is N1 N2? Let's take a look at this example. Is Mr. De La Cruz a teacher? So, using the N1 wa N2 this pattern, let's write De La Cruz san wa sensei this. This is the affirmative form of the sentence. If we want to make this a question, all we have to do is add Ka at the end, the sentence now becomes, is Mr. Del Cruz a teacher? With the rising intonation. So how do you answer this question? So of course, we answer this either by yes or no. Yes, Mr. Del Cruz is a teacher. Yes is hi. And then we just repeat our sentence above. De la Cruz san wa sensei des. So that's how we answer this question. If it's a yes. If it's a no, the full sentence is no, Mr. De La Cruz is not a teacher. Ie. De La Cruz san wa sensei ja arimasen. So using our grammar point number two, um, we are stating that Mr. De La Cruz is not a teacher. Let's take a look at another example. Is that person Andrea? Okay, first let's use N1 wa N2 this pattern. That person is Andrea. Anohito is that person. Anohito wa Andrea this. That person is Andrea or you can say Andrea san. Miss Andrea. Anohito wa Andrea this. And to make this into a question, we add is that person Andrea? Again, with a rising intonation. So, yes, that person is Andrea. Hi, ano hito wa Andrea des. If it's not, no, that no, that person is not Andrea. Iye, ano hito wa. Andrea cha arimasen. Okay, now, questions using interrogative word who. For example, we don't know the name and we want to ask, who is that person? So, we use, again, N1 wa N2 pattern. So, in this case, N1 is that person and N2 is who. So, ano hito wa? Who in Japanese is donata? Or dare. Donata is the polite way of saying who, and dare is the um, the normal way of saying who. So you can use either donata or dare. On a daily conversation, it's okay to use dare. Ano hito wa donata desu ka? 
who is that person? So, if we translate the the sentence into in, back into English, it literally goes like that person is who? Ano hito wa donata desu ka? So, for example, the answer is that person is Mrs. De La Cruz. Ano hito wa Maria De La Cruz san des. Okay, moving on. Our next grammar is N1 mo N2 des. So, this means N1 is also N2. Mo is is also. So, for example, our sentence is James is an engineer. James wa engineer des. And we want to say that Anthony is also an engineer. So, we say Anthony mo. So, we replace wa with mo. Engineer des. Anthony mo engineer des. Anthony is also an engineer. Another example, if you want to say, I am also an engineer, you say, Watashi mo. So you don't have to repeat engineer this because it is already implied. Watashi mo. Me too. Our next uh, grammar point is N1 no N2. So this grammar pattern has many uses. So we'll focus on this one, N2 of N1. So let's look at this example. Anthony is an IBM employee. So IBM is N1, employee is N2. Anthony wa, so again, N1 wa, N2 this. But this time, N2 is N1, no N2. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, Anthony wa, IBM no, shine this. Anthony is an IBM employee. Employee of IBM. Anthony is an employee of IBM. So Anthony wa IBM no shine this. Another example is James is a student of Manila University. Our N1 is Manila University. And our N2 is a student. So let's construct the sentence. James wa or James san wa Manila Daigaku, Manila University, no Gakse des. So James is a student of Manila University. James wa Manila Daigaku no Gakse des. Lastly is the word san. So this is used to show respect. Basically, it is the equivalent of honorific titles such as Mr., Mrs., or Miss in English. So let's take a look at this example. This is Mr. Anthony Mabini. Kochira wa Anthony Mabini san. This. Okay. So um, this is an example of when you are introducing someone to another person. Kochira is the polite way of saying kore or this. Kochira wa Anthony Mabini san des. Or kono hito wa this person is Mr. Anthony Mabini. Another example, that person is Miss Aguinaldo. Ano hito wa Aguinaldo san des. So whether it's female, male, again, Mr., Mrs., Miss, they're all the same. You only need one word for this in Japanese and that is san. Another example is, how old are you, Mr. Mabini? Or how old are you? If you're talking to a person named Mr. Mabini, Mabini san wa oikutsu or nansai. So this is how old in Japanese. Deska. So you know that you in Japanese is anata. But when you're not very close to someone you're talking to, you address them with their names. So in this case, even though you're talking directly to Mr. Mabini, you just you still call them by their name, like a third person. So Mabini san wa Nansai desu ka? So, Mr. Mabini, are you, how old are you? In my experience, you can attach son to first name or last name. If the other person introduced themselves to you using their last name, so, of course, you will address them using their last name. For example, Suzuki desu. 
I am Suzuki. So you call them uh, Suzuki-san. But if they introduce themselves to you using their first name, for example, they're, they feel comfortable with you and they want you to call them by their first name, Yuki, for example, um, it is still best to add San um, when you're talking to them, even though it's their first name. Unless you're very close, you can drop the San and just call them by their first name, Yuki, if you're really close. Otherwise, um, still use San, whether it's the first name or the last name. Okay, so how do you introduce yourself in Japanese? Okay, if you went over to our vocabulary list, you would encounter these words. Okay, self-introduction. In Japanese, self-introduction is jiko shokai. So, jiko is self. Shokai is introduce. So, self-introduction, jiko shokai. Usually, when you are new in a company or at a new workplace or at school, they would actually ask you to do a jiko shokai or to introduce yourself. So how do you do this? The first word you will say is hajimemashite. So this means how do you do? But literally it's like for the first time. Hajimemashite. Usually you say this and then bow or you can say this while bowing. So hajimemashite and then tell them your name. Watashi wa, for example, Maria de la Cruz desu. Watashi wa Maria de la Cruz desu. I am Maria de la Cruz. Another way of saying this or watashi wa Maria de la Cruz desu is instead of desu, you use tomoshimas. Tomoshimas is much more polite way of um, introducing yourself. And then uh, followed by dozo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. So this means Pleased to meet you or please be nice to me. So this is the basic way of introducing yourself in Japanese. Hajimemashite. Watashi wa Maria de la Cruz desu. Dozo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Okay, so you can make it very simple or you can add more. Um, for example, you want to say, I am a Filipino. You want to say, you want to tell them your nationality. Watashi wa Filipin jin desu. Or you can drop watashi wa and just say Philippine jin desu. Because you started with watashi wa Maria de la Cruz desu, Philippine jin desu. So it's already implied that you're talking about yourself. So you can um, remove the subject which is watashi or watashi wa. Another way of saying your nationality is, of course, telling them where you're from. Uh, in this case, Philippine karakimashita. I am from the Philippines. So again, you don't have to say watashi wa because it is already implied in the sentence. So, watashi wa Maria de la Cruz desu. Philippine kara kimashita. And you can also tell them what you do. If you're a student or if you work, you can tell them. In this example, I am a student. Dai gakusei desu. I am a student. So, again, let's go over our basic self-introduction. Hajimemashite. Watashi wa Maria de la Cruz desu. Philippine jin desu. Watashi wa daigakusei desu. Dozo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Okay, let's do some simple conversation practice. The first is introducing yourself. So I am A and you will be B. So please fill in the necessary information and then see if you can introduce yourself in Japanese. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so I hope you were able to introduce yourself in Japanese. Another example is when you're in a casual setting and you meet someone new and they ask you for your name. Um, okay, try to fill in the B part and I will be the, I will read the A part. Let's begin. Sturei desu ga o namae wa? Maria san desu ka?
Okay, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions regarding this lesson, uh, please comment down below and I will try to answer your questions. See you in the next one. Bye!